It's great to be here, got to look out at all of you. I mean, it's, it's special for me to see this crowd here because I, Randy Pausch can't be here, but he knew you were coming. He knew you were coming and he was hoping that, uh, that you'd be the class you're going to be, I, I know that. Uh, it's interesting because I'm so honored and Randy would be honored to know you read the book. Who read the last lecture? They made you, didn't they? Oh, thank you for reading it. Well, I hope that his words in the book will, will uh, matter to you in the years to come and you'll take his words and, and take them to heart. I gotta tell you one thing uh, that Randy would tell you. He would tell you that you made a great choice by coming to Carnegie Mellon. He said, if a person, if a human being can love an institution, he loved Carnegie Mellon. You're gonna le learn to love it too. So um, that's Randy's message to you, I, I know. In fact, Randy insisted that the words Carnegie Mellon be on the cover of the last lecture. And the book is now in 46 languages. So I've seen Carnegie Mellon in languages I had never even, even heard of. Uh, I'm a 1980 graduate of Carnegie Mellon. Uh, I was editor of the student newspaper, the Tartan. Uh, when I was here, I majored in creative writing. Uh, where are the h and students here today? You know, all of you over here are special. They're really special. You're the greatest there, so. So, uh, my mother said, what in the world are you gonna do with a, a creative writing degree? That's what she said to me. What are you going to do with that? And I said there, I said, well, I'm gonna write, I'm gonna be creative, I'm gonna get a job, but I didn't really, didn't really know. And then I went and lived in her basement for 30 years. No, I didn't do that, but it all worked out really well. It's gonna work out well. Some of you might be wondering, what are you gonna do with your lives? It's all gonna work out well. You're the smartest and the best, and it's gonna work out, it's gonna work out great. Just call your parents once in a while, email them and tell them, you know, tell them it's, it's working out and it's gonna be great. Uh, I've been a newspaper columnist at the Wall Street Journal now for a decade. I've been writing for 30 years. I write about life transitions. I write about those moments when life takes a turn. You know, you're born and you, and you have your first breath, you get your first kiss. Today's a life transition. You're entering college. Uh, I write about first love. Who here fell in love on orientation? How many of you? <laughs> it's the same Carnegie Mellon I remember. <laughs> I write about how the culture is changing, you know, and how children don't always know what we think they know. I wanted to write a column about uh, how people, how young people don't know who, who Walt Disney is. I, I flew down to Walt Disney World, I stood by the statue of Walt Disney, I asked a hundred children walking by, who is that man? And only 34 kids could tell me who he was. Uh, I, you know, one boy said that he died on Space Mountain of a heart attack. They didn't know because their parents didn't tell them. So I write about that. I write about the things in the culture we have to tell our children. And that's what you're here today too, is to learn things that those before you knew. Uh, I sometimes write about my own family. I've got two kids in college myself at Indiana University. Uh, my middle daughter last year was invited to the homecoming dance at a neighboring high school and she got a dress and she got her hair done and she was very excited. And then the night before, the boy called and he said, me and the other guys, we've decided the homecoming dance is for nerds and so we're just gonna go and uh, sit in so-and-so's basement and you girls can come. And my daughter was sad. She wanted to wear the dress and go to the dance and, and you know, I know what goes on in basements. I'm no idiot as a father. So I thought, what could I do for my sad daughter? And then it hit me. I could embarrass this boy in front of five million readers of the Wall Street Journal. So that's what I did. I wrote a column and I told readers, I said, you tell your children, you tell them to be honorable, you tell your sons, be honorable, be, be men of your word. If you ask a girl to the dance, you take them. And you tell your daughters that if a guy's not treating you right, to heck with them. Now I know you're all entering college now. I know about sexting and texting. I know everything. And I know that girls will sometimes get a text in the middle of the night from a guy and he'll say, what are you doing? And the answer should be nothing with you, not now at three in the morning. So I encourage you to be honorable and chivalrous and to be people who care about the other people here in this room. That's another thing I, I want to tell you. Uh, sometimes I write columns and they become books. Uh, uh, sometimes books become other books. Uh, Captain Sellenberger, who landed in the Hudson River, he, uh, he read the last lecture on a plane. He was actually, um, he wasn't flying, he was a passenger. And anyway, after reading the last lecture, he asked me if I would write his memoir with him, which I did, and it was a great experience. You know, the flight that we landed in the Hudson River was only five minutes, but the book is all about all the moments in his life that led him to be able to do what he did that day over the Hudson River, all the schooling he had, all the accidents that he studied over his career. And I tell you this because you don't know what moments in the next four years 
you're going to need in the future. You might not be over the Hudson River in a plane without in engines, but there'll be a time when you're going to take what you learn here in the next four years, and it's going to be of, of great importance to your future. So, so buckle up and study and, and, and suck it all in. Uh, of course, the most uh, important thing I've ever written, the most meaningful thing, is the last lecture with Randy Pausch. I'll tell you how that happened. Uh, I was at my desk at the Wall Street Journal. The phone rang, and it was the Carnegie Mellon Computer Science Department. They said they had a professor dying of pancreatic cancer, going to give his last lecture. So I thought, maybe there's a story in this. Having gone here, I knew about the last lecture series. So I called Randy on the phone, and he was, you know, I was nervous. What do you say to a dying man? But he was so engaging and fun. He, uh, he was driving in his car on his cell phone. I said, Randy, I don't want to get an accident. Do you want to pull over? He said, ah, an accident, pancreatic cancer. Just, just let's keep talking. So I got off the phone. I thought I'd really like to see him give this talk. But the plane ticket was $800 from uh, Detroit, where I live. And so my editor said, just call him when it's finished and see how it went. But I decided to drive. There was something about Randy I thought I would drive. And I drove here, the 300 miles. And it was the best 300 miles I've ever driven because it was really an astonishing afternoon. Uh, he was the most alive person in the room that day. You know, you think of a dying person in their deathbed with the covers pulled up and a frown on their face. And there was Randy saying, I'm going to keep having fun every day I've left because there's no other way to play it. He had so many jokes. He said, you know, I've had a deathbed conversion. I just bought a Macintosh. And it was, it was like a nerd orgasm when he said that. The place just went <laughs> crazy. So I wrote my column. The Pittsburgh media wrote about it. And the next day, uh, he was asked to go on Good Morning America. Then Oprah called. You know how famous he got. And there was interest in a book. And Randy wasn't sure he wanted to write a book. And he wasn't sure he wanted to do a book with me. Uh, he said, if we, if we write this book together, I'm going to spend a large fraction of the rest of my life with you, so we better have fun and it better be meaningful. That's actually what my wife said to me when we got married, that same line. But I told Randy, I'm going to try to help you write a book that will touch your children and maybe reach people beyond that. And we set out to do that. And as you know, Randy wrote the book pretty much on his bike. He wanted to get exercise every day, and he would ride his bike around his neighborhood for an hour. And over 53 days, we talked by, by cell phone. While he had a cell phone headset on, we talked in those 53 hours became the book. And there were things that were in the book that people just embraced. You know, he talked about painting bedroom walls. And I started getting emails, first by the hundreds, eventually, you know, more than a thousand emails from people saying they're going to have their kids paint their bedroom walls. And Randy thought, gosh, they're taking me so literally. I meant let your kids be creative. But here people were saying, take this paintbrush, no dinner for you until you paint your, <laughs> your bedroom. Uh, people say to me, you know, Randy was a gifted storyteller. There are many people in the room here who, who knew him. People say to me, what was it about the last lecture that, that made people embrace it? And I think the reason was because it was authentic. When you go on YouTube and watch that lecture, you're seeing a man talking to his work family, his colleagues and his students. And he's saying to them, go on without me and do great things. And he's saying to them, I love you. And as you're watching, you realize, oh my gosh, he's also talking to his kids. And he's saying to his kids, go on without me and do great things. And he's saying, I love you. And so there's so much junk and silly stuff on the internet, you've all seen it, that when you see something real and visceral like that, you want to share it. And that's what people have done all over the world. They've taken Randy's, Randy's message and they've shared it. Uh, people say to me, how is Jay Pausch, Randy's wife, doing since uh, Randy died? And I'll tell you this, if, if you've seen, who has seen the video of the last lecture? You've seen it, Most, many of you have seen it. If you've watched the lecture, you know the toughest moment to watch is near the end, it was Jay's birthday. And he asked those of us in the room to sing happy birthday to her. And we were really singing through our tears because we knew it was our last birthday together. But anyway, he coaxed her onto the stage. And from where I was sitting, it looked as if he was, he, she was whispering in his ear as she hugged him. And so I said to Jay, when I was working on the book, I said, Jay, what did you whisper in Randy's ear? And she said she had whispered, please don't die. The magic will go out of our lives. And so Randy and I put that in the book. And then we handed the book in to our editor in New York, and he thought, gosh, that's so sad. We can't leave that in the book. We've got to cut the second half of the quote. The magic will go out of our lives. And so we cut that second half of the quote. But now, you know, tomorrow I'm going to be speaking at Meconomy at 1.30. I'll be signing books and talking about the behind the last lecture. But I often add that line back in there because it belongs there. Well, why am I telling you that? Uh, Jay told me a story about what happened a few months ago. She was at a water park in Florida having a great time with her three little kids. And at about three in the afternoon, she realized that she had lost the engagement ring Randy had given her. And so she was distraught. It was the most valuable thing he had given her. But as she was standing there in her wet bathing suit, as they tried to look in this water park for her ring and never found it, she realized something. She realized the woman she was on stage that day was a woman who was afraid that the, her husband would die and the magic would go out of her life. And here her husband had died, but the magic was still there. The kids were growing up. They're beautiful. They're, they're full of life. 
There's still magic in her life. And that's true of this university too. Randy is gone, but one thing Randy said, you know, he told people as he was dying on his website, he said, send your, send your students, send your children to Carnegie Mellon. And there's a lot of other professors here, including those behind me. And they're gonna be wonderful for your kids. And you are, you're lucky to have these people behind me and all over this university. So Randy's not here, but there's great people who, who are here. Uh, I remember President Cohen saying to Randy when, on stage after Randy gave his lecture, he said, there's gonna be students here who won't know you, but we're gonna tell them about you. And he made that promise to Randy. And by giving you that book to read and inviting me to come here, uh, President Cohen is keeping, is keeping his promise. Well, there's, there's one chapter that was cut from the last lecture, it's called The Bridge. And we cut it because it was uh, maybe too celebratory of Randy, he didn't want to celebrate himself that much. He, was a, a, he had a nice ego, but he didn't want to do that. So I'll tell you what that bridge chapter was about. Uh, and it's out here, it's such a, so beautiful at night, you've probably seen it. But Randy just loved the idea of that bridge. He loved that it connected the arts and the sciences. And he said in the, in the chapter, I am moved and pleased when I picture all the people who, one day, who will one day cross the bridge, my wife Jay, our kids, my former students and colleagues, and a lot of young people with some place to go. Well, that's you in this tent. You're the young people with some place to go. You're the people he dreamed about walking on that bridge. And so I wish you health and happiness and much success in your tenure here. And uh, I thank you for reading the book. Thank you.